Hi, yes, hello, and welcome back to, well, actually, this is kind of my first ever vlog. So I picked a really big project to do this for the first time ever. If you're new here, hi, my name is Ashley, and if you're a returner, welcome back. I am beyond excited. If you have watched me on the main channel, then you know I'm a huge fan of Dolly Parton, and when this became available, I was like, shoot your shot, girl. I am beyond thrilled, beyond excited, beyond pumped to show you that I am staying at Sweet 1986. Now, if you don't know what this is, you're like, Ashley, it's a bus. It's Dolly Parton's actual tour bus. This is her actual tour bus that she has toured on, lived on. It's even where she stays when she comes to open up new parts of the park or do any kind of PR. This is where Dolly stays, and it is where she has traveled in it for, blah, 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 is where she has traveled for years. No telling how many people have been on this bus. Like, the memories that were made, the songs that were written, and the ideas that were dreamed up on this bus. And I am so lucky to be able to be staying here for the next two nights. And I wanted to bring you along. And of course, you had to get the outside shot of the bus, of course, the giant pink dolly. So the whole thing is called Dolly's Suite 1986. And when I applied, they literally said it was an experience. And so I wasn't really sure what that meant, y'all. Oh, by the way, this is not sponsored. I'm just a diehard fan of Dolly Parton, both in country music, her acting, her as a philanthropist, the little butterfly. <laughs> and there was a bunny out here yesterday. As a philanthropist, as a businesswoman, and just as a human in general. If you've never done any kind of research on Dolly past music, because I know country music ain't everybody's jam, but if you've never done any kind of research into her as a person, as a businesswoman, I think everybody should. You can learn a lot about the heart of a person by how they love on other people. Something really interesting that comes a part of this experience is you get a chef's dinner. And I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> the wonderful team here had sent me an email asking me if I had any food allergies for the chef's dinner and then sent me a menu which had all these wild words on it and I replied and I was like I don't have any food allergies I don't know what any of these words mean but I'm down to try whatever your chef can create and let me tell you something I did not film it but I took plenty of pictures because I just wanted to take it all in I wanted to take in the moment that I was like on Dolly's tour bus um, the head chef for Dolly's Resort who cooks for Dolly and her family when they come in. That's why there's a grill out here because the chef was set up. The chef came and set up out here and then they served me at the table. Listen, when you're talking to the girl who thinks a number seven from Taco Bell is fine dining, y'all didn't know. Listen, I had little, I had ribs last night. So we're gonna cut in between the two bones. Here's a bone, here's a bone. Yep. Why is it wiggly? I thought you said there was a bone in it. There is. Oh. You can either pick the meat off, you can pick it oh off. Oh my God, it in wow. Your face, and just, Stick it in. I just... <laughs> <laughs> Stick it right in That's there. That's what she said. <laughs> Yo, that's some tender meat. Mm -hmm. That's also what she said. <laughs> you mean to tell me a little dog parts is in here and just like, it's a caveman? I tried a sweet potato puree. The food was off the charts. Honestly, it was so much food that I still have dessert in there that maybe we'll share whenever we get inside the bus. A fully functional fire pit, which I haven't used yet because um, it is summertime in Tennessee and it's it's hotter than Satan's butt crack, so um, I have not used it. <laughs> they do have s'mores here at Dream More Resort, so I think tonight might be a s'mores night for me. So, very excited about it. And I saw a bunny out here yesterday. How freaking cute is that? Well, come on in. if I didn't offer y'all something to drink. So it turns out that Dolly Parton is actually a Coca-Cola gal. Full fridge stocked with Coke, Diet Coke, uh, Sprite, of course root beer, because we're in Tennessee, you have to, and water. Whenever I first got here, uh, food and beverage came down with a cheese tray for me, and it happens to have one of Dolly's favorite kinds of blue cheeses. And they warned me that it might be a little um, fragrant. Am I about to roast Dolly Parton's favorite cheese? Maybe, I don't know, I love cheese. But this is what you see when you first walk in. So rumor has it at Dollywood and at Dream War that whenever the bus is parked, it means Dolly is here. Um, I don't think word has really gotten out that much that you can stay in the bus. So um, people, <laughs> the windows of course, the windows are blacked out, but I can see outside and uh, 
People have been taking many pictures, thinking that Dolly's here. Drugs on them, it's me. Y'all don't know who I am. Odds are. television channel that's exclusively just for the bus which is a slot show of Dolly throughout the years and it just plays all of her songs like on just constantly so as you can imagine I sat right here and I had a good sob like wow <laughs> you know? this is so cool they left everything original except for um, the glass cases to display her guitar and her dresses Door. Okay. Now, in case you may or may not know, Dolly Parton is a five foot even. She a little squirt. I am five foot nine. I was I've never been on a tour bus before. Why would I have done that previously? I wasn't sure how sizes would go. Like the hallway, the main walking way, easy peasy. You know, standing up straight. The real challenge has been the bathroom. I mean, look at that. Fresh flowers in here. Did you ever think we'd be in the bathroom together? Did you ever think we would be in Dolly Parton's tour bus bathroom together? Me either, weird. It's a bathroom, but um, I'm not the biggest person, but I'm also not the smallest gal. So, as you can imagine, there's not much room in it. This is not one of the bathrooms that you're gonna sit on your phone and scroll on TikTok for a while. You're gonna do your business and you're gonna get out. What's wild is this isn't Dolly's bathroom. There's a second bathroom on the bus. It may. When you come down the hallway, you got your bunk beds, which I was um, advised to stay off of the top one, which is probably wise considering I've broken my arm three times. I have the curtains closed on this because it's just my luggage. It's, it's not cute. But I was told <laughs> that I could try to get in the bottom bunk if I wanted. So naturally I'm gonna get in the bottom bunk and just really hope that nobody comes in. I don't know who was sleeping on these bunk beds, but they sure were not a, a full-size person. Ow! I'm a liar. I can stretch out in here. Like, my feet are touching, but I can stretch out in here. So I guess you just drive it and you just shut it. You couldn't go. Actually, you know what? It's, you know what? As a person who's scared of the dark, that kind of... <laughs> I'm not claustrophobic, but like that's kind of scary. An emergency hatch, uh, I reckon. If you just you just really hated spending time with Dolly Parton and she wouldn't let you out, you just climb through the roof. There's a cute little mirror. It's actually closet space, but oh, that's what I'll show you. When you stay in the bus, you get a custom Dolly Sweet 1986 robe that I get to take home along with matching slippers. But right next to it, why am I breathing so heavy? But right next to it is another display case. They kept everything original on the bus. This is exactly how Dolly had it, except for the display cases. The display cases used to be just extra storage space for her and whoever's traveling with her. And they decided that people who are staying here probably didn't need that much closet space. So they took out the shelving and all that jazz. And that's where you see the guitar, the tambourine, the dresses, and the shoes, and her wig closet. So I'm sure you've been seeing the hints of pinks and purples in the background of all my footage from the front of the bus. It is now time to get to Dolly's personal haven on the bus. Of course, this is her bus, but it's time to make it to the actual bedroom where you get to sleep when you stay at Dolly's Suite 1986. Hi friends. So there was a pocket door that I just opened that can separate the bunk beds and Dolly's bedroom from the front of the bus. And then there is this pocket door which separates the bunk beds from Dolly's portion of the bus. So let's just go on in. So immediately to our left is Dolly's bathroom. Which, as you can imagine, is also incredibly small. Once 
Again, Dolly is an even five foot tall and probably cannot weigh more than 90 pounds soaking wet. A five foot nine, 185 pound gal. It's a tight squeeze. Also, I didn't tell the group this, like uh, the team this, but earlier today I had a moment of sheer panic when I thought that I clogged Dolly's toilet. Luckily, I did not, but there was a moment. And I'm like, how many people can say that they've clogged Dolly's toilet? This girl. Do you get a t-shirt for that? I don't know. Another pocket door even separates her own bathroom, bathroom and shower area from her personal bedroom. But what's even funnier than the size of the toilet area is probably the shower for me. Just for some reference, I have you sitting on the sink that you just saw in Dolly's bathroom. So I bet you never thought you'd be in the sink watching me get in the shower, let alone Dolly Parton's shower on her tour bus. <laughs> Am I gonna cry? <laughs> you are not allowed to cry when you're about to get in Dolly's shower. <laughs> Right? For reference, I'm five foot nine. Washing my hair would prove to be a tad bit difficult, but doable. Uh, my wingspan does not fit in the shower, let me tell you that. But here's the funniest bit, is I was told that Dolly loves to take baths. And so when she designed the bus, she insisted that she have a bathtub. Bathtub. Here it is. What? It is a deep bathtub though, so. Am I gonna fit? Not good, not well. Listen, I don't know how she fit in here. Or I guess I know how she fit in here, but I don't know how I fit in here with water. There ain't room enough for the both of us, you know what I mean? Uh, I will not be taking a bath on this bus. <gasps> Gee Wilkers. Listen, I'm setting up my ring light right now. And so far, this footage has been going, in my opinion, been going very well. But uh, I just broke my ring light. So, so don't be like, oh my God, Ashley don't have her ticket to the Hot Mess Express. Now, Ashley's still fooling well. Oh, I fixed it. I fixed it. Just, just to let y'all know, Hot Mess Express is still doing fine and dandy. Still alive and well, even on Dolly's tour bus. So we have finally made it to Dolly's actual bedroom. Or the bedroom that's on the bus, at least. I gotta tell you, I was honestly surprised because her persona and what she dresses and and how she dresses on stage is totally different from how she's chosen to decorate her home away from home or as she lovingly calls it her gypsy wagon listen i know that that word has come under some scrutiny for being um a slur what we're not gonna do is cancel dolly Parton. she is queen she loves everybody and you know that's not a slur coming from her there's another pocket door, and let me tell you something, I closed this last night and I forgot and I got up in the middle of the night and scared the crap out of myself, number one. So I'm not gonna close that again tonight, let me tell you that. Just wait to be patient, grow a stronger love deeper, it'll soon be your time. You don't need wings to that her little chair, her chair don't even come up to my hip. Can we talk about that? It hits my hip, hip. This is where her chair hits me, the middle of my thigh. She tiny. Also look at this. Okay, so where are you supposed to put your legs? The depth of this is not even to my elbow. Not even to my elbow. And then of course one of these little magnifying mirrors that make you question your entire reality because you can see every nook and cranny on your face. Yeah, don't like them. You know Dolly has everything back here that she would need to just close herself off, write the music. You know, in her interview, she talks about, you know, she's lived on this bus for most of her life. She has toured for most of her life and traveled the majority of it. And back here is where she said she would just lock herself in her room and she would write songs and, and the movie she's been a part of. And this is, this is where the magic happened. All the magic in all its forms, if you know what I'm saying. What has more miles on it, the bus or the bed? I don't know, I didn't ask. Not me struggling with a refrigerator, oh God. So she has her own refrigerator back here, her own freezer, so she can keep, you know, 
like I'm sure she also eats Hot Pockets like everybody else does. And then she has her own microwave back here. But something I was very excited to see is this bad boy. Her wig, I don't want to call it a closet, uh, wig wardrobe, uh, wig display maybe? So it is no secret that Dolly Parton has worn wigs for all of her career probably, if not even before that. She still uses them, so of course they're not on the bus, but. So that picture in there is what it normally looks like with the wigs. I'm gonna have to say that either this hat or this hat was probably in Hannah Montana. And there she is, sitting at her vanity with her Heartlands guitar that's on display up front. Here she is, standing. Literally where I'm standing currently. And a picture of the bed, which, speaking of which, is here. I feel like they're gonna like come out here and tell me to get off the bus or <laughs> oh can I get it together to film this at all? <laughs> I gotta calm down or I'm gonna cross if I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> oh my goodness you have officially seen Dolly Parton's tour bus. You have seen Sweet 1986. The experience has been unreal. There's like a team of people that check in on you, that, that you know, make sure that you have everything you need. You get a chef's dinner, which I told you about earlier. It's like a five course meal, or I don't know how many courses, and it's all paired with wines, which... <laughs> you got to eat some of Dolly's favorite food, and apparently every time Dolly comes in, she always wants ribs, the macaroni and cheese, and the banana pudding. Well, I ate all the macaroni and cheese last night. Again, this is not sponsored. I, I paid <laughs> to come out here and do this, and because I genuinely love Dolly Parton. The work she has done for Sevierville, the Great Smoky Mountains are beautiful, but like this part of Tennessee, like I just wonder where it would be if Dolly wasn't Dolly. And so it's really, really cool to think about the jobs that she's brought to, to this part of the state, to this area. And the price tag for Sweet 1986 is a hefty one, but oh my god, has it been beyond worth it as a fan. A portion of it goes to Dolly's Foundation, it also goes to um, her Imagination Library, which was inspired by her dad's inability to read. Being a Tennessean, I was born in West Tennessee, I got to be one of the kids that got the books before it went national, before it went global. The program spans five countries and gives more than a million books per month to kids. I'll leave a link down below if you want to see if you can register your child in the Imagination Library because what a fun thing, what a cool thing that's free to you. I have loved Dolly's music since I was a little kid and I grew up singing karaoke in my granddad's garage. And then as I grew up, I started working in country radio and I'm not a fan of new country, but I love old country. I'm a huge fan of Reba McIntyre, Dolly Parton, Loretta Lynn, Patsy Cline. And then the more I grew up and, and I've been watching movies on the main channel, nine to five, straight talk, Vessel Whorehouse in Texas, like, and then watching her interviews, growing up and listening to her speak and listening to her interviews, she, is so genuine. I mean, I've never met her, but you know, if you've watched any of her interviews, any of her movies, listened to any of her songs, she exudes authenticity. She exudes genuine love and kindness for people. Ever since I can remember, like in middle school and high school, all I wanted to do was make people laugh, make them feel less alone. And I found that, you know, in 2020, I started the, the YouTube channel and I thought I was gonna make a couple videos and it'd be over. But instead, now my whole job is to entertain. <laughs> oh my god, if little kid Ashley, if high school Ashley, oh, if college Ashley, me today, I still don't believe it that this is my life, that I'm on Dolly Parton's tour bus, and something I have always loved about her 
the confidence she exudes and it's confidence it's not arrogance she's always so humble and in her interviews she always carries herself so you know no matter where you're going to tune into her whether it be her interview with barbara walters or the local channels when she when she opens up a new part of the park or her interviews on jimmy fallon you're going to get the same dolly and i think that is so amazing and i think that's why she's always stood out to me because she is her and she owns it and she loves who she is. She has a quote that she said, I don't know when she said it or what interview it is, but she says, I just, she said, I just, I come up with all these dreams and I just have to do them and I keep dreaming myself into a corner. So I just gotta make it work. And that's honestly how I feel for her to keep giving of herself is just mind blowing. And then to see a woman, she is so smart, so smart. Another one of my favorite quotes is, uh, I think it was in the, maybe a Barbara Walters interview, I can't remember, in an interview, somebody said, how do you feel about all the dumb blonde jokes? And she said, well, I don't mind them because I know I ain't dumb and I know I'm not blonde. <laughs> so <laughs> she's also been so open about um, laughing at herself. You know, how do you feel about being the butt of the joke? She was just like, well, she doesn't care because she knows who she is. It doesn't matter what anybody else says about her. It doesn't matter. And like people all the time hound her and ask her about her husband, Carl Dean, because he's very private and uh, he doesn't like the spotlight. And she's like, I know I got caught. Me and Carl Dean have each other's back. And her and Carl Dean are so solid that like you can question their marriage or question Carl Dean and Dolly's just going to be like, we know that we know, you know, she knows her marriage. She knows their love. She knows herself. She knows herself so well that it's almost like nothing that you can say or ask her is going to phase her because she knows who she is. She literally has an empire around her she, that she has built from the ground up. If you see the house that she grew up in, which there's a replica on the property of Dollywood. So her parents and all 12 of them kids grew up in this two room house. It's just always been really amazing to me. And, and of course her and Carl Dean didn't have any children because she, like me, and a lot of other women, has endometriosis, which ended up leading to her getting a partial hysterectomy. In another interview about Imagination Library, when it talks about like why you wanted to start all this, of course she was inspired by her dad's inability to read. Her dad was really insecure about that, and so she started Imagination Library. She was like, well, God didn't give me any children, so it's almost like everybody's kids are my kids. She has so much love to give and she just gives it freely and I think that's why people love her so much. What you give out, you're gonna get back tenfold and it's just beautiful. And so for her to open up this private space, this, I probably sound so dramatic, but like this sacred space where she has spent her life dreaming up everything she's ever done is just really special and really powerful for me because to be just another little girl in Tennessee growing up with just big dreams. So to be another little country girl from West Tennessee and growing up, she's just always been a big idol for me. It's just really special to me. Her whole story is really special to me. To be here in this space is, I mean, my cry count now is up to 16 and this is, has been, <laughs> cry 16 has been a continual cry for 20 minutes. So I'm sure it should count for like three individual cries, correct? Probably. And here's the thing is none of this would be possible without you. And so I had to film it. I've taken time to soak this in for myself and I, I keep taking time to just sit and look. I don't want to forget any detail of this because it's so special to me. I had to bring you with me, even if you're not a Dolly fan, you just like hanging out with me in the background or maybe you are a Dolly fan and you don't even know who I am. You just wanted to see this. I had to share it with you because without you watching with me and laughing along with me, laughing at me sometimes, crying with me, both <laughs> now and in movies, it's only possible because of you. And so I had to share this with you. I don't know what I did to deserve your support. I don't know what I did <laughs> to deserve this opportunity to get this chance. I am eternally grateful. It's just very cool. I, I, I don't have a very big vocabulary. I can't think of another synonym for cool. <laughs> Genuinely so overwhelmed with gratitude for you. I've told you before that you've saved my life and you did. I've been in some really dark times and I kept showing up because I knew if I showed up, you would show up too. So I had to keep showing up for you. And I'm so glad you pushed me 
to show up, to keep chasing my dreams, to keep doing life with you. I can't wait to see what else is in store, whatever the future has. More adventures, more movies, more traveling, more laughs, more tears, <laughs> more of everything. And I can't wait to spend it all with you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Cheers to many more years and many more members on the Hot Mess Express. <laughs>